So one of the things I really like doing on my YouTube channel is really diving deep into a piece of hardware. Of course, Surface Duo has been something I've talked about ad nauseum. And with the original Duo, I think I did three reviews over the course of time. With Duo 2, I've already done a review and a one-month review. And the reason I do this is because I like to just really be in-depth and I like to talk about how things evolve over time because I know that there are so many possible potential buyers of these devices that are looking to see, you know, not just where the device was when it came out and not just five or six minutes of a, you know, a quick synopsis of how this thing is. They want to know in depth, is this thing worth my money? And they also want to know in a month, in three months, in six months, has anything changed? And is it now worth my money? Hey, I was on the fence early on. Where is it now? Is it better? Is it worse? People want to know these things and I will happily provide this information. But the problem here is that I am but one person and my experience is the experience of but one person. So what I did here today, and I did this in the past, I, mean, I could probably do it again in the future for something else, is I'm leveraging the power of the viewers I have who have bought Duo 2 to try and explain and to communicate the possible problems you might have if you were to buy Surface Duo 2 today. Because my experience with Duo 2 has been largely positive. I'm really not having any substantial bugs at this point with my Duo 2. I'm really enjoying it. Pretty much everything's great with me. But that's not the case with everybody. So I ask you guys, what bugs are you experiencing? And what we're going to do now is I'm going to talk about them and I'm going to bring these to people so that if you are a potential buyer of Surface Duo 2 and you, you, you know, you, you're undecided, you're going to be able to tell from this, you know, all the information you could possibly want on bugs that you may have on Duo 2 so that you can make an intelligent and informed purchasing decision and you'll know what what might happen. What's the worst case scenario here? So let's go through these. As you can see here, the names here are people that reported this bug. And then to the right is the bug that we're talking about. So these people here all reported keyboard failing to open after being used on one screen, sometimes being used on one screen, sometimes just in general. And this is absolutely something I am also experiencing. Now, I know that I just said I'm not really seeing any bugs, but I am seeing this. I guess I should backtrack and say I am seeing some bugs. But the difference here is that this is something that happens to me maybe two or three times a week. So basically what we're talking about, let me just show you here. Let's go to the overhead camera. And I highly doubt I'll be able to actually like get this to happen. But I'll give you an example. So let's say I'm on Twitter and I'm going to tweet something. What will happen is my keyboard just won't pop up. Just nothing will happen. I'll get this option button down here where you can change keyboards but the keyboard itself will not appear. And how I fix it literally every time is let's say I've got another app open over here. What I'll do is I'll just go home over here and swipe down to get my quick search. And the keyboard will literally every time for me will appear over here. And at that point I can tap over here and the keyboard will work. And from then on, it's, it's fine. And like I said, this will happen to me maybe a couple of times a week. Now, obviously, from the people that were posting it here, they thought it was significant enough to bring up in this list. So this is something that may be happening to more people, maybe happening more often to other people. It's not happening that much to me. And like I said, I fix it pretty, pretty quickly. Um, Michelle and Andy here both say touch response on the keyboard still isn't that great for them. So what they're talking about here is actually typing on the keyboard. So, you know, maybe you're thumb typing, maybe you're swipe typing, and it's just not picking up the presses that you expect it to. So after the December update, typing got much, much better for me. But I would say there's probably still room for improvement, but it's not something that's really bothering me all that much. But um, it may bother you more. This is something that's going to be somewhat subjective and some people are going to be more bothered by it than others. So just keep that in mind as well. We've got these three people here, Andy, Nick, and Chris all say touch stops responding at all until they use the home gesture. So basically what they're saying is, you know, they're, they're using their phone and maybe they're trying to open up an app or trying to do something and it's just not, you know, not responding. Obviously I'm purposely missing the icon, but it's just not responding to them and they have to swipe up to go home again. Maybe they're already on their home screen and something's glitched out there. And then after doing that, maybe then they're able to, to proceed using their phone. Andy is also having Bluetooth connectivity issues. Now, that's something that I've talked about with LDAC or LDAC. I don't know if you're supposed to read that or say the letters. I don't know. A DAC is an audio 
thing. So maybe it's LDAC. And basically what I'd seen before the December update was earbuds that used LDAC would have weird glitchiness going on. So I haven't had any other Bluetooth related issues, but the original Duo was plagued by Bluetooth issues. So again, something to keep in mind. Robert here says left screen stops responding to touch until open and close. So he's having the similar issue we just talked about, but it's just the left screen. That's rather odd. Ricky here says that the camera is overheating while using 4K video. It's not something I've really tested, to be honest with you. I've not really tried filming long time, uh, long term 4K video. 1080p seems to be fine for me. I don't really video very often at all to begin with. And it's not that crazy for a device that's this thin. If you're for, if you're filming, you know, 4K 60 for, you know, a couple of minutes to, to start, you know, generating heat, to start getting hot. But that's something that if you're, you know, thinking about filming for a long time in 4K, 4K 60, keep that in mind. Uh, PJL test geotags in the camera app. So what we're talking about here is actually in your photos app. If you pull up a photo, you'll be able to see a map of where you took that particular photo below the photo. So now, as you'll notice for me, sometimes it's working, right? It's working just fine. And then suddenly it's not working. So for me, it seems to be really hit or miss. Sometimes that's functional and sometimes it's not functional. So once again, I said I wasn't experiencing bugs and here's another bug that I am actually experiencing and I'm just not really bothered by it. But that, if it's a feature that you use that you really wanna have those geotags, Keep that in mind. It doesn't seem to be working consistently. Um, Mr. Waz, Mr. Waz, I'm not sure how to say that. Span OneNote blank left screen. So that's something I'm definitely not seeing. Let's go over here and open up OneNote. And let's go ahead and span it. And as you can see here, everything is working just fine. So let's go to, you know, different pages, different things like that. And everything seems to be working fine. OneNote span works just fine for me, but maybe it's something that might not work perfectly for you. Hard to say. Fingerprint scanner occasionally not working. The fingerprint scanner for me has been totally rock solid, but I have seen a few people have issues. Granted, you know, let's think about Pixel 6 has had you know, fingerprint scanner issues. Some people have had them. Some people haven't had them. So this may be something similar to that. Saya here uh, says that he's had an issue with an app actually switching screens on its own, jumping back and forth. That's a pretty crazy one that I have definitely not seen. He's also had issues, he or she, I'm not sure. I just assumed he and I shouldn't have done that. This this individual um, stops uh, apps stopping or spawning until they actually have to reboot. Just general system hangups or something some people are having. Greg saying the phone app is not responsive when he's in a call or, or when ringing. So he's getting a phone call and he's trying to answer, but it's not working. Or he's in that phone call. Maybe he's trying to go into speaker or hang up or whatever, and it's just not responding. The phone app has been rock solid for me, but again, your mileage may vary. Archon is having some screen burn issues. So if you don't know what that is, basically, you know, you're, you're, you've got something on your screen and you go to another screen and you can see a slight ghosted appearance of what was just on the screen still on there. I've noticed on a lot of OLED phones and screens, if you look really, really closely, you can see some ghosting occasionally, but it goes away. So burn in would be, it's permanently there, right? So maybe on your home screen, like all your icons are in the same place every time like maybe if you left it sitting here then let's say you you go to reddit and you can see the the outline of the squares of your icons still there you know on top of reddit and they don't go away they're permanently there so that'd be the difference between burn in and just ghosting ghosting isn't that crazy on most oled screens but it's it's really faint really minor burn in is permanent a much more serious issue i'm not really seeing that on my duo but uh archon here is uh, Mark, phone mode black screen while sh while showing double tap on the back. So what he's talking about here is actually going into phone mode. So you're unlocked, you go to phone mode, and you'll see the double tap to switch screens back there. But he's saying that he's got a black screen here and the double tap on the other screen. That is definitely a really weird one. Uh, Hordak and Aaron both having the black screen bug. We've talked about this a ton on this channel, but basically what we're talking about here is that we are in book mode and randomly one screen will go black because that screen thinks it has been turned around and you're going into FOMO, but of course it isn't. Luckily, I'm not seeing that at all. That's a big reason why I stopped using my original Duo because it was really persistent and it drove me crazy not having that problem. Aaron's also having an issue where the three button navigation uh, is vanishing for him. So on uh, my uh, particular duo, I use gesture navigation. So there's nothing down there. But you can go into your settings and enable three button nav. We have a home button, a back, and a multitasking button. And for him, 
that apparently is vanishing at some point. He's trying to use it, and those buttons just are not there any longer. Maybe that's a problem more people will be seeing if more people were using 3-button. I think most of us are sticking with gestures because the gestures are working quite well now. Sounded kind of like I said gestures, like the people that would entertain kings, but I meant gestures. Chris here is having an issue with copy and paste covering his screen. So you've got a copy paste menu here and let's, uh, I'll show you what we're talking about here. So let's open up a web browser here. Let's long press and then you've got a menu here. This is copy, share, select, all that stuff. I've seen this from a couple of other people that I don't remember who. I don't think they were specifically in my comments, but basically that menu, that little pop-up bar is missized and it's like covering up a lot of the screen or it's in the wrong place and it's just doing weird things. I think that started happening fairly recently. I actually saw that one time, did it one time to me and I restarted my web browser. And, you know, I swiped up and held, I, I closed it, opened it again and it stopped. So I don't know what that was or if that's something that you could try, but... Uh, Keep that in mind. Chris also has issues with the keyboard covering the text field. So when you go to type, there's a text field. The keyboard should come up and the text field should, should slide up as well so that it's always above the keyboard. Apparently his keyboard is actually occluding the text field. You can't really see what you're typing. That's annoying. OneDrive going blank while displaying photos. I don't actually use the OneDrive photo app. I use Google Photos. So maybe that's something that is more common. Brian says his camera app is freezing. The camera app still is a little laggy i would say it's it's better but there's certain things like rotating that just takes a slight longer amount of time than you would think mine isn't really freezing but there are just a few little uh stutters here and there so keep that in mind and jerome says he's having a flicker of white screen on certain brightness settings so when it's when his phone's uh brightness level is set to a certain spot you will have random flashes of a greenish tinted white screen that is super weird and I would wonder if that's a software problem or if he has an actual panel that is kicking the bucket. I would consider RMA in that one if I had any ability to do so. That would be concerning to me. So guys, this is pretty much the most comprehensive list I can come up with of bugs that people are experiencing. Now, some things you, you aren't really seeing here, really. No one reported this, and I haven't seen it either, but we used to see all the time on Duo was bugs with Microsoft Launcher, where stuff was overlaid on top of itself and all kinds of weird things. I'm not seeing that, and no one reported it. Maybe someone will comment that they still are, but it wasn't reported in the amount of time I asked these questions, which was, I think, over a week. So that's pretty interesting, but again... This is a pretty comprehensive list of bugs that Duo 2 is experiencing. So if you're thinking about buying Duo 2, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was educational to you. Definitely do watch my first review and my one month review because there's a ton more detail in there as well. And of course, the video I made about the December update is probably pertinent and relevant as well because it helped so greatly for this device. Guys, thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you contributed to this video, thank you a ton because you are not just helping me, but you're helping other potential Surface Duo buyers and members of the community. So again, thank you so much for having done that. Stay tuned for the next video and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.